The Florida Horse Podcast is presented by the Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association. Welcome to the Florida Horse Podcast, brought to you by the Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association. I'm Tammy Gant, and we're here again for part two, the Marion County Economic Impact of Equines. And I'm joined today again by Steve Cook. Let's get started. Steve, welcome to the studio today. So glad you can join us. Glad to be here with you again, Tammy. Here we are, part two, economic impact studies. And this is our much awaited for um, that we're about to unveil, the Marion County Economic Impact Study. Yeah, we uh, in the last few weeks, the FTBOA has released a lot of economic figures on the, uh, you know, the, the value of, of, of uh, the national uh, equine industry. Um, nationally thoroughbreds, Florida equine industry, the Florida thoroughbreds, and, and all of those are very, very strong industries in their own way and in their own regions. And in the last couple of weeks, the FTBOA has released the very latest American Horse Council's economic impact study of uh, the equine industry in Marion County, Ocala metro area here in Florida. And uh, there's some fantastic figures. Yeah, and I know you as an economist really, really delved into this and looked at those numbers and and saw how impactful they are. You want to share a couple of those top line to start with? So the total economic impact for equine in Marion County comes to a $4.3 billion figure. Now, it's hard to picture what is $4.3 billion, but if you picture um, direct and indirect and induced effects of a equine industry as it ripples out through an economy, um, it becomes a contributor to the total gross domestic product of a county, in this case, Marion County. And so equine are 22% of the Marion County gross domestic product, nearly uh, about a fifth of the entire GDP. Which is, is huge. And I think this county has been growing for the last 12 years that I've been here. And this economic impact still is significant, has been significant, continues to be significant at 22%. And I always kind of say one in five is the easy way to remember that. One in five. You know, this is growth on growth. So it really is um, uh, some compounding effects. Recently, Tammy, you and I were both at the Ocala CEP uh, annual luncheon. Yeah, and for those that might not be aware of and an outside of our community, that's the Ocala Metro Marion County Chamber and Economic Partnership. It's a big mouthful, but it basically says, hey, this chamber is number one in the country, and part of that is because of the economic um, impact that they are able to push through our community from all the different sectors. And, of course, we're talking about the big one, the equine sector. That is a, a, a significant and vigorous uh, partners and uh, certainly stakeholders of ours as an industry. We uh, love working with our friends over at the CEP. We were uh, recently at their annual luncheon and you know there was 1,200 some folks there representing all of Ocala uh, and the Marion County different industries. And this was a big gathering over at the World Equestrian Center. And you know, to look around that room and consider that uh, th that represents the Marion County GDP that was a cross section of our industries and one fifth of that somehow ties back uh, through various ripple effects in the economy uh, to Florida uh, to Marion County equine. It was really remarkable awareness. Yeah, and I, and I saw that as I went through and, and shook hands with people that I knew and say, oh, you work at the Equison Hotel, um, that's an equine themed hotel, and oh, you are. Um, part of the Grandview Clydesdales that recently had the equine invitational here, the Grandview Clydesdales. And so you see all the different breeds and disciplines coming together and all of those. Um, but I think what's really interesting, a part of that is it's big and it's right up there, right against distribution, manufacturing, and all these other sectors that are really growing in our community. Um, but the thoroughbreds are still right there in the mix and, and they're very, very strong in that equine um, impact study. And everything you just described, those are economic ripple effects to help uh, folks understand if you've got a horse and then there's folks surrounding that horse uh, that feed that horse and groom that horse and train that horse and then you put feed into the horse and back at the feed mill there's workers at the feed mill that get paid to do their work and then they buy their children's school supplies or take their wife out to dinner. You know that is the ripple effect of one horse all the way through an economy that creates that one-fifth of GDP and that 4.3 billion dollar total economic impact. Yeah, and, and, and again, when I mentioned that thoroughbred part of it, we're looking one in two horses in Marion County. One in two horses. That brings up the whole horse population thing. There is 75,000 horses in Marion County. It's and crazy. It, 75,000. At one time, they used to say horses outnumbered the people. 
uh, four to one. And now with our community growing, the horses still are significant. You know, I, I think it's one in four households has access to a horse. Yes, it is remarkable. Clearly the horse uh, is king in uh, Marion County. That's 75,000 horses. One and two of those are thoroughbreds, which of course are very near and dear to our hearts at the Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association. And what that means is there's a lot of jobs created. 28,000 jobs are equine or equine related in Marion County. I think it's 28,500. There's a lot of jobs. And we've talked a little bit about um, a previous podcast about how those um, jobs connect to the horse. But I think there's a part of this that's really interesting, a subset, which is the tourism part of it. And so our Visitors Bureau just recently laid down a walk of fame, a walk of champions with thoroughbreds in front of our downtown square and also other breeds. But what's interesting with that is the Visitors Bureau knows this impact. They've been tracking the impact of the various parts of our industry. So when people come to the OBS sales, they're looking at the numbers. They're looking at the numbers for the various shows. And one of the things with the OBS sales, we know, we know 49 states and 44 countries are represented at the OBS sales. And so when you think about that, a lot of people are coming in here from outside the area. So tourism, as far as we talk about equine tourism, is a huge number in that. Huge number. And and for a visual on that, um, it, it has been remarkable to me. I've lived here in Florida for a couple years. Um, we very much enjoy uh, Ocala in the area. We especially are loving this time of year with the weather. Um, but just watch the exit ramps coming off of I-75 onto that road that feeds out to the World Equestrian Center and over to Hits. Um, it's a steady stream of horse fans every day. That is horses um, coming in to Ocala to perform or undertake whatever trail riding or other activities that people do, or they're going to OBS to be sold to generate almost $200 million. You know, in Ocala, we don't have a hard number on this, but we are, we can confidently say that somewhere between one half and three quarters of the entire thoroughbred two-year-old national crop comes to Ocala to learn how to be a racehorse. And that's just one of those other, I think, interesting to statistics that is out there that, that people go, wow, you know, I didn't think about that, but when they think about it, they go, oh, yeah, that makes sense. I've seen all the horse trailers. I've seen all the horses moving, the, the economy that that creates. And, and just like at the OBS sales, people say, well, what do you mean when you talk about direct effect? That's a direct effect. You're out buying a horse. Mm-hmm. The indirect effect is, okay, there are people associated with that horse um, that are out there uh, working with the horse, the exercise rider that gets on them under the under tax show. But then you go a bit further and say there's an extra person employed at restaurants in season or that extra person that's working over in the hotel district. Why? Because there's extra people with heads and beds, which is what the economic uh, impact of the VCB likes to see. And, and those tax dollars come back to us as citizens. And so there's how it all kind of plays out just at an OBS cell alone. So that was you just described, Tammy, that 20, that's 28,500 collective uh, equine and equine related jobs. 56% of those are thoroughbred related jobs where all those horses are going through the training centers and the OBS sales and also we're breeding a lot of horses here. I'll throw into that mare care. You know, I think um, there's a lot of mare care facilities right now um, that are getting ready to fold out. And so they may not be actually the breeder of the horse, but there's those specialized facilities, just like there are specialized veterinarian programs right now that are looking at the equine reproduction that's happening this time of year. So we've got our foaling, we've got our sales season, we've got our training season. And so thoroughbreds, every sector of a thoroughbred, the thoroughbred world comes here. It really, really does in some form or fashion and then heads out to the racetrack. And you know what, what this all collectively uh, uh, creates is a lifestyle and green space. Mm -hmm. Our uh, equine in Marion County are um, using 210,000 acres of Marion County. That is over 20% of the entire Marion County landmass. Yeah, and when you think about we're bordered by the forests, we're bordered by the springs, that's a huge number there. And of that, 195,000 acres of it are in the farmland preservation area, which is very, very key. And our partners um, that we work with throughout the county and through throughout the state that support the preservation of farmland are very key to that. They're looking at let's build in Marion County in the urban service boundaries. Let's preserve the farmland preservation area because that 195,000 acres plus um, by the report of the 215,000 acres from American Horse Council is really, really valuable for that equine footprint in order for us to to do the jobs and to get the horses ready and and prepare them in every way and fold them out and give them that green space that horses um, enjoy and then also the scenic vistas that that people that are on horse people enjoy. Tammy that 75,000 horses on 210,000 acres is not just that. Marion County Florida 
has the nation's largest single county population of equine. We're yeah. number one. It's worth saying again, we're number one in the nation in our county. And as we mentioned before in our previous podcast, you know, Florida is the third most populous horse state. So when you think of horses, I think people really need to be thinking of Florida. But when you think of horses concentrated in a county, really Marion County is that number one when you're looking at that. Well, Steve, thanks for coming in today to share with us about the economic impact study. I think it's really, really key to our, our county and to the citizens, and I'm so glad that we were able to share that with them. The equine industry in Marion County, Florida is very, very strong. We're glad to be and very proud to be a part of that, and I really appreciate being in the studio today, Tammy. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks so much, Steve. The Florida Horse Podcast is presented by the Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association. 